please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. Hi folks and welcome to another episode and today I'm at Cleveley Electric Vehicles with Matt who runs Cleveley's and today we've got something really good to show you. We have got a older electric vehicle that's got a HV battery fault and we want to show you just how easy it is to repair that and to bring that back up to a usable state. It's now at the point where it has become undrivable through various faults that are in the ECUs and most people seem to think that after three years, this is nine years old this car, after three years the battery ends up in landfill and that's just not the case. So if you come inside with us we'll show you just how easy it is. The vehicle in question is a 2011 Nissan LEAF Generation 1 and we are interested in the fault code which is inhibiting a restart and its cause. It's very likely the isolation fault that the BMS is seeing shown below. A quick scan with LEAF SPY is showing a massive voltage spread of 239 millivolts with cell 91 and 92 being the culprits. This is definitely the best place for us to start. Add to this that the available indicated range is now down to 36 miles from 80% state of charge, which is bad, means it's a very poorly car. To start, we power down the leaf and being keyless, we keep the key a few meters away. Next, we disconnect the negative terminal of the 12 volt battery and then we can remove the manual service disconnect, which splits a pack voltage. And that's it. Everything else is carried out underneath so we can get the leaf up in the air. The under trays can be removed easily, a battery gun will definitely speed things up for you and it should look something like this with them all removed. There are six earth straps to remove and then we pull the LV harness and HV cabling. These are specifically designed not to come loose in daily use and require a safety lock to be removed prior to release, however it's all straightforward. The Leafs pack weighs just shy of 300 kilograms so a proper lift is a must. This is definitely not a job I would do on somebody's driveway. With the pack now fully supported, we can remove the securing bolts from around the casing and that brings us to 20 minutes in and we're dropping the battery out, which felt rather rewarding in a strange kind of way, shown here by the smile on Matt's face. Next, we remove the ring of lid bolts, roughly 20 in total, and you'll need some security Torx bits to remove the fixings from around the MSD. A quick safety point, I knit one of my HV gloves during an earlier part of the strip, but I stay in the habit of regularly checking them, and as seen here, it's a good job I did. Now we're removing the lid, which reveals just what's inside, and that should look something like this. We took 10 minutes working out what we had to remove, we didn't want to make any mistakes, and then started to strip the pack to remove the bank which contained our faulty module. Between us, this took just over 20 minutes, and in terms of difficulty, we found it very basic and had no real issues. We lift out the bank, which is definitely a two-man lift, and place it onto a thousand volt insulated mat, and you can see we're still using our HV gloves. These modules combined, despite in a strip state, still retain an unsafe working voltage. We now carry out some basic checks with a multimeter, checking voltages, and to confirm our earlier diagnosis, and luckily, we were correct. The design allows each module to be removed easily and with the culprit safely on the bench we can check for the isolation issue. Here you can see it has broken down, registering only 2.8 ohms, way outside any EV's parameters. We balanced up a new module in line with the remainder of the pack at 8.1 volts and tested the isolation before fitting. Open loop, that's exactly what we want to see, so this one is good to go. Rebuilding is a direct reverse of the strip, but Nissan's forward thinking towards serviceability means it's quick and most components are pokey oaked, so the chances of fitting apart incorrectly are largely mitigated and this further installs confidence in the build. Although the footage here is sped up, replacing the module stack actually took us around 15 minutes and as I keep mentioning, was very straightforward. Nissan's pack has a reusable dry lid seal with compression limiters, so refitting the lid is problem free. Remembering the six security torques around the MSD, we then fitted the ring of securing bolts and that's it. The pack is ready to go back in, and it takes a whole lot of pumping from both Matt and myself. We refit the pack securing bolts and the six earth straps, 
and now we can reconnect the RV harness and refit the HV connections, remembering to lock them in correctly. Refitting the under tray, if done methodically, is easy. Alternatively, you can follow our example and make it look like a Laurel and Hardy sketch until we have no bolts left. An hour and 45 minutes after we started, the leaf is ready to come back down to ground level, where we refit the manual service disconnect, reconnect the 12 volt battery negative terminal and power the leaf back into life, where we're hoping for a good result. And as you can see here, that's exactly what we got. We're 40 miles up in range, and when we look into Leaf Spy, we can see the voltage spread is now reduced to 35 millivolts, and this will further improve with some balancing charges. Also, the isolation fault and fault codes didn't return, so we consider this a good 500 pound repair. Okay, folks, so some really good news. The original fault with this car was it wouldn't restart. Uh, it would uh, throw a fault in a DTC for an isolation error, and we traced that down to one module and we've replaced the module and now it's working. I'm showing 75 miles there in D. If I put it into Eco, it's showing 83 miles. So I think we're pretty sure that's repaired to fault and I've restarted it and driven it a few times, so that's good. But more importantly than that, it's, it's a great repair and all that, but it's the fact that the repair was so easy. Now, it's not, it's commonly thought that a EV battery, especially this battery, which is old technology, after three years, is dead in the water and it goes into landfill. But that just isn't the case here. This is nine years old now, and hopefully it will go on for another nine years. I think the car itself will wear out before any of the powertrain components. But it was also a very easy repair. I would genuinely rather do that job there because it's cleaner, it's easier, it's much more straightforward than say, uh, let's think, well, most jobs on an internal combustion car, definitely a clutch, and the clutch is a pretty in-depth job, especially on some cars. But, I mean, it's, it's two hours, two hours and done. I'm not dirty, the car's fixed, and it's going off at the road. So, looking at it from a non-EV driver perspective, don't think that every EV that ever breaks is non-repairable and the battery's going in landfill after three years. It's just not the truth. So I'm gonna leave it there guys anyway. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's give you a little bit of an insight into what can be done. And a massive thanks to Matt Cleveland, Cleveland EV for having me down and helping me, uh, allowing me to film and get involved in the job. So big thumbs up for that. So thank you for watching everybody. Please remember to like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Kate Phantom. And we'll be back next week with another episode. So see you soon.